got the esports, we got the gamers, we got the opinions. We got the Marissa Roberto and the Jody Marks. And these are Spies and Me at the Ball. If you're new here, that's cool. This is how the show is going to work. Producer Tyler will throw two minutes on the board, and Rob and I will each present topics and we'll each express our opinions over them. Okay, that's cool. And at any point, one of us can mute the other using this here mute button. And the other Convenient. person has to shut up for 30 seconds. Got it, dummy? Yeah, shut up. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's kick it off with stories with the battle between battle royales. Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney said in an interview with Venture Beat that Fortnite's player count was unaffected by the launch of Apex Legends. He even said that Apex Legends has helped re-energize Fortnite by making more people play shooters and that Fortnite was very close to reaching 250 million players. Brody, do you believe what he's saying? Hmm. Is there room for both of these to succeed and are they really rivals? I think we got a few topics on them, so I'll spread mm -hmm. my opinions over four minutes uh, in this no, case. No, I will meet you. But <laughs> what we, have, we have to fill four minutes at least. Just so go. let me talk. Okay, God. Epic Games. Right now, I'm, they're doing, you know, it seems a little sketchy on their platform. Okay, so far uh, you've offered me zero platform. insight. Can you continue, please? So right now, their numbers are definitely not real numbers. Those are not active players. Those are accounts that have been made. Mm. Those could be bots. Those mm -hmm. could be people getting banned and then making new accounts. Those could be people playing split screen. Hold All on. those are numbers count. Are you accusing count. Epic Games of fooling shareholders? No, they're not fooling shareholder numbers. They're giving real numbers. They're just not being fully transparent on what those numbers mean. They okay. just said players. They didn't say active players. Okay. Their actual user base could have dropped, but they don't want people to know that, mm. right? Now, on the point of just shooters being inflated in overall because of Apex and that, yeah, that could be a very valid thing. All There could be more people playing BRs and by nature, people moving on Fortnite as well, yeah. um, just because of that. So I think overall, yes, he's right. And Fortnite was good for the gaming industry in the sense that it, you know, brought more it, people into it. For sure, it completely and Apex broadened our reach. Could be helping out Fortnite. So Matt, he could be right. It's the other thing that could be a little sketchy. Well, what's the other thing? Oh, the, the numbers. The number. Yeah. Th okay, that he wasn't being honest. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, no, I do agree that both games can actually indeed help each other because yes, it just means more eyeballs on the gaming industry. It means more people playing. And you know what? Like when you're squatting up with friends, like yeah, you can squat up in Fortnite. But hey, we're done with this now. Why don't we play some Ace Apex? We're all together. We all have the game. It was all free for all of us. Why not jump? In together. I do agree with him. I like that it just kind of helps the industry just in general. And I don't, I mean, why? I feel like he doesn't need to lie. They make a lot of money. Who cares? Or, the, or maybe he's saying that because there is actually a problem. He doesn't want people to think there's a problem, but we got to move on by staying on this topic. Speaking of Epic Games, the Epic Games Store is getting some more timed exclusives later this year. At the GDC, Epic announced that Obsidian Entertainment's The Outer Worlds will be exclusive to its storefront on the Windows Store on PC. 12 exclusives were announced in total, including Frogwares, The Sinking City, and Remedies Control. Okay. Now, we, they're buying up everything. Yeah. They're buying up everything right now. Yeah. Um, is this good that they're just stealing all the exclusives? I mean, I guess consoles do it too. Yeah, I, I, they're not stealing if they bought them. Well, originally Elder Worlds said it was coming to Steam. On the original announcement, there was a Steam logo okay. in the bottom there, but now it's not going to Steam. Well, I think a year later, but it's like, it's it's kind of frustrating to the gamers. They're like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to pre-order this. I'm, I'm ready to play no, this game honestly, on Steam. Honestly, are you and now... really that frustrated that you can't play a game that you wanted to play until a year later? Like, whatever. Like, yeah, sure. I'm going to mention Animal Crossing again. Yeah, sure. I want to play Animal Crossing <laughs> you right now. You me for mentioning but... Rocket League. Shh, shut up. God, you're so annoying. No, obviously, I'm going to mention it just for my point, OK? Because we have a lot of games out there. We have a lot of things to play. Do you know The Division just came out? Are you aware of everything else that's out there right now? We can play Apex, we can play Fortnite, we can play a lot of other things. It's okay that this game is maybe holding off on your precious Steam. Like, everything is gonna be fine, Brody Moore. Don't worry about a, a darn thing. We good. We're gonna wait for Animal Crossing, like everybody else. You can talk now. Can I talk now? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, no, the, I think the, the real question comes is, do you think this is going to save their platform? Because their software is trashed here. What? Like, it's, it's, it's garbage. Like, there's, no, there's nothing on there. It's like the only good real platform on PC right now is Steam. Like, they, they actually has full features. So they're trying to get exclusive to save their platform, to save their store. But it's, it's garbage. Like, why not just actually add features to it? That's my question. Do you think the exclusives 
can save their platform? Or are people going to be like, no, well, screw this, there's no features? Okay, well, to that point, do have exclusives saved, like Sony, have exclusives saved. You know what I mean? Like, Because we have these exclusives to actually make sure that the gamer pays for that platform, right? So I feel like in this world now, we're getting to a point where there's not really going to be exclusives anymore, mm -hmm. right? So we all need to kind of dive into that world, and everyone needs to play that game. Also, on those numbers, <laughs> real quick thing here, a lot of people are saying they're trying to sign up for the Epic Games Store, and their emails are already being used, which means bots are signing up. So those 85 million people on their store, not real people. Holy, why don't you keep stirring that conspiracy theory mm. pot while we move on to the next one. At a Q&A this week, Overwatch lead hero designer Jeff Goodman said that the team regularly discusses whether to add pick fan system to the game. That's interesting. Though there are no plans to add it right now, pick ban could be a way to deal with the ever-growing roster of heroes. So, Brody, mm -hmm. do you think a pick ban system would work in Overwatch, first of all? Yeah, so I've always been a fan, mm -hmm. straight up, disclaimer, always been a fan yeah. of pick bands. Yeah. Um, I think it uh, deepens the meta, yeah. it deepens the player interaction. Um, now, that's going to be a really long ban pick phase for <laughs> six players per team. So I'm not sure if I want it in Overwatch. And like, th th those characters already have a lot of depth. Like there, like there, there's so many abilities on each character. Yeah. Plus their alt and that. Like it's, it's not like you're taking vanilla characters and then doing like well, with I mean, one you, ability. You don't have to follow the exact system that like League has in place. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, even like R6, you you can just kind of do your own thing. I'm sure they're discussing it, how to make it their own, and Overwatch League can do that. Like what if it's just one from each genre, like one from like one DPS, one support. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, why can't we just do it like that? I think I think what I would really like about this is right now you you have just the meta shifts so much, and then everyone just plays that meta, right? There's no real diversity right now at the top level. It's mm -hmm. it's like okay, this is the meta. Every team plays that meta, um, and you, they don't deviate too far from it. So what this would do if you had bands is now you actually have to diversify a bit, and it would introduce I, I think a bit more entertaining top-level play because it's not just the same strats being run over and over again. You're yeah. going to see new and creative things happen. So I, on that sense, again, it's going to be a long band pick phase yeah. because so many people are there. But I do actually think that um, it, it could make the top-level meta a yeah. little more exciting. It so could I, be I'm also kind of on board, actually. really interesting to see if, say, one game that you play with each team that you're playing against, you can't, you can't play with any support or you can't play with any tank. Like, changing it up that way where it has a real shift in the meta or you're only playing DPS. That just Yo, doesn't sound fun, though. Some... Why? What do you mean? Why not? I mean, I always, I always roll all DPS. If I can, everyone on my team, DPS, please. So why not have one game that you play against each team that's all DPS? All right, we'll figure it'll, it out. It'll ban we'll this whole thing. We'll figure it out later. Because we're done on this one, but we're keeping with Blizzard, of course. In Hearthstone news, Blizzard will not be banning Hearthstone pro player Roger from the HEC 2019 World Championship, despite his rule violations. Ooh. Roger was caught watching a delayed broadcast along with his Chinese Taipei at a tournament in October mm -hmm. and was accused of win trading earlier that year. Blizzard said that Roger will be punished, but that he earned a spot at the championship on his own merit. Mm -hmm. So Marissa, do you think this punishment is about like he's... He's not getting it's punished for the tournament that he didn't cheat getting into, yeah. but he's, he will be punished afterwards. Now, what that is, Well, yeah, knows, because they're saying he like, didn't technically cheat to get into the tournament. Into so. this one. Should he be punished for this one, though? Or since he got in on his own merit, is that fair? Uh, like, I, this is a tricky, this is a tricky one. Okay, or maybe just fine. Okay, or obviously, listen, obviously he means a lot to Blizzard, number mm -hmm. one. He means a lot to this tournament. He means a lot to fans coming on board and mm -hmm. viewership, or else he would have just straight up and banned from the tournament because right. how can a cheater be allowed to just, unless they want to create a so villain. Top player unless privilege? they want, it could be top player privilege. It could That's be. Right. Top player privilege is real. Because it is real. You're absolutely, you're right about that, baby. But uh, I do think that there needs to be some kind of system in place here because now all these other players that are b beneath him or that Blizzard maybe doesn't favor in a certain way mm -hmm. are watching this and now have made him the villain. So maybe this is something for fans to watch or another reason for fans to watch and to have somebody to cheer against. That could be something. Do you think that's punishment enough? Because I mean, obviously we've been, we've been over this before, and I think it's kind of unanimously decided by most gamers that yeah. cheating equals bad, and you should be punished for it. Oh yeah. Right. So it's if there is no real like, what is the punishment to a pro level player though? Is it going to be a fine? Is it a what temporary? Do you mean you're not you're not a pro if you're cheating. You're not a pro if you. No, use but he. 
technically is good. It just, he, for some reason, I don't know why he did it anyways, but like, um, he just exactly. did this Exactly. Why, why would you do it if you're good enough to not have to do it? So it what, doesn't make any sense. What, you are Blizzard now. Yeah. What should you do oh, in wait, the future? Oh, wait, am I Blizzard thinking about the views that I want for this tournament? You're just Blizzard. And thinking about the money and thinking should, about what I want out of it? What should the punishment be? Should, like, I believe fines because they're professionals hit them in the wallet, right? You know, take away from prize yeah. pools and that. But, you know, it's like a lot of people would want bans. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, okay, if it were like the uh, like sports sports, the player would be fined, of course, and would be allowed to come back and play. You're still giving your you go, you Blizzard, go back make your decision. No, if I'm Blizzard, I'm thinking about the money in the view. Fine. So fine. fine, and he can play. Because that's the way it's going to be. It means money, baby. It means views. Let's okay. go. Now it's time to see what streamers are up to and clip it. Our first clip comes from Hob, who accomplished something that we will never be able to do. So context, for people that weren't following what he was doing, he just completed the, fir <laughs> the first ever uh, no-hit run of the entire series of games between Dark Souls and Bloodborne. That if he got hit, he would reset. I think he did something like... Did you cheat? It was like 600 tries. Like, he did 600 <gasps> tries to get to this. What? And, and that, that stream that he did, that one, it took him 12 hours because he has to take breaks because he's yeah, got uh, tendinitis. Yeah. Um, so like that, that is the first time ever anyone has done that. Oh Imagine getting to the end and getting hit and having oh to restart the whole freaking series again. Yes, oh my god, especially against that final boss. Are you kidding me? That is all kinds of pressure. That's like next level. Uh -huh. This is what the pros feel when they're on stage, people watching kind of pressure. Like, how? why would you do that to yourself, man? I mean, kudos, congratulations. I hope somebody bought you a steak dinner or something. Like, my god, that is incredible. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure the donos probably started rolling after that point. Well, like, at least. And, and he pro I think he was compensated by his stream probably by subs and all that stuff. But congratulations, okay. um, again. Right. That's yeah. just, that's nuts. We're Agreed. forever going to never be that good. Never. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. Our next clip is from Clint Stevens, who had a little something to say about offline mm -hmm. TV. Pokimane was talking about me on stream. Whoa. I got invited to their house a really, really, really long time ago when T-Pain was supposed to show up. And the funny thing is they told me like two months in advance, they're like, hey, we got this thing with T-Pain. And I was like, you know, I'm not in LA right now, but I, you know, I'd love to do that, that'd be sick, but probably can't. And then the funny thing is two months later, they just happened to run into T-Pain. It's like, oh my God, he just decided, we just found him on the side of the street. I thought that was funny as fuck. All those things are so fake, let me tell you guys. Yeah, he's, he's calling him out for being fake AF. Uh, on offline TV. Now, I I don't have an issue. I mean, like, here's the thing: movies are clearly scripted. Okay, right? those like, are movies. Let's let's dial it all back. All of let's your jokes it. are clearly scripted. Okay, first of all, I don't even make jokes. Mm. Okay, actually. Brody, honestly, what? let's oh, keep wait, this you know what day is it today? I'm You're supposed to be nice to you so today. so annoying. Um, no, I already muted you. Like, I really regret <laughs> that because I could use it right now. Um, no, honestly, yeah, offline TV is, of course, scripted. A lot of it is pre-planned. A lot of these YouTubers pre-plan a lot of their things. I think you would be quite naive and foolish to be going into any of these top YouTubers and thinking that any of this stuff is just random happening like that. It, that's not the yeah, way it works. It? That's not the way the world works. That's not the way reality TV works. But is that I'm sorry. I think that's well, deceptive. Here's yeah, the thing. of course. If you well, we should be smart enough to understand that all of this is scripted. If you set up your, yeah, but they try to play it off as if it's real, right? And that's yeah, they're, that's where it's deceptive. Playing a yeah, role. Like, like I don't find that entertaining. Like, you do. You want the subreddit it. scripted Asian gifts. Like, they're not funny because you know they're fake. They may have a good principle, but if they go in saying like, oh, this is fake. Watch this skit. To me, that's even that's funny now because you're not being fake about it. Brody, they have the trouble of trying to bring eyeballs in constantly, of constantly trying to please their fans, their subscribers, their Patreoners, all that stuff. How mm -hmm. do you do that daily and make it seem spontaneous? It's impossible. You think all those Instagrams that all these girls post, that all, well, that I post, you think that that happened that day? No, I took some photos earlier and I'm posting it again later they and I'm taking the location. Like, that's expose. what has to happen. They no, don't this is, pretend. That, that, this is Say, I took the this world. the other day. I do. I don't lie. Oh, I am honest about it. But they are. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. You're a good person. They're not. Oh my god. Well, I'm sure they're all good people, but it is deceptive. Anyway, and that's the issue. 
It's about that time where we uh, discuss all the things the pros have been saying and sharing on Twitter with their profound thoughts. This one is a little less profound, but oh man, is it ever sad in that really, really pathetic kind of way. So he says, bravo, you won a so we quote tweet for this display of, of help me out here, internet. What shall we call this? So she's sharing some faceless idiot thinking he's hilarious when, let's be real, he's just a joke. Uh, he tweets, Zoe, you better watch out. It makes you look chubby and no one wants a fat girl on the OWL desk. Are you, are you freaking serious, dude? Like, this is, this is what I mean. These guys with like, Can I mute no, myself? Cause I'm no ready avatars. for her to just go just, off. <laughs> they're ready for a no, they have no avatars, okay? They just take a comment that she makes on her Twitter and decides like, oh, I've never had a conversation with a girl before in my life. I'm gonna say something. So she says something back. And she did, yes, she did quote him and put him out there. But again, this man is a coward, assuming it's a man and not a little boy that has no idea how to deal with women or talk to women in any way. Do you have any idea how to have, I don't know, just a genuine conversation with a woman? Do you think that we want to be told how to dress, how to act, what to say? No, sorry, this isn't like way back when. This is not that world anymore. This is a professional woman doing her job and she can wear whatever the F she wants to wear. So shut up. I mean... I think he did it to get the attention and you just gave it to him. Obviously, which is why I'm not giving him a name. I deleted the name mm -hmm. from, my, from my rant. How about when people do this to you, ignore them? People are being mean yeah, heads, I do. Them. For the most part, I do. Uh, if they're just overtly idiotic in that mm -hmm. way and cowardly, I usually don't give cowards a platform to shine because, well, they're cowards. Good speech. You did, you did a great job. I have nothing else to add. Do not patronize I'm me, Brittany I'm not patronizing. I'm saying Holy I got smoke, nothing. Because he's going to get next. Now she's making things up. Uh, that, was, that was patronizing, the way you said it to me. Yes, it was. For something completely different, K. Brad is dead ass asking the NRS community to be completely honest with him. If I play MK11 and get cooked by one of you NRS boys, and y'all going to tell me to take my ass back to Capcom? <laughs> Yo, I mean, I it's funny, he's but like, there. he's kind of, like, it's, it, it's it got a good point though. It's like, is if he's played a game and people tell him to leave, that's how are you going to grow your community? Like, uh, shouldn't they be like wanting people to come in? No, no. I feel like he's just setting himself up because like, obviously he knows he's probably not going to do the best in the community just yet, but he still is a personality in the street fair community in the FGC. He's a staple and he's still got to re remain relevant in some way. So he's going to maybe jump to that whole scene, try it out for a second, just see how he does in Mortal Kombat. Why not? Mm -hmm. But uh, he's just concerned that maybe that community might kick his ass back to Street Fighter. Whatever, putting it out there just in <laughs> he case. He already knows he's going to get his butt whooped. But, like, yeah. I know, I, I believe that trash talk has to happen. Again, that's, Hell yeah. we all know that's what makes the FGC the FGC, uh, right? And we love them so much for it. Mm -hmm. And not for something completely different, but something we can all empathize with. Don't lie. Don't lie. League of Legends Pro Amazing enlights us with true bravery is to attempt to fart when you have diarrhea. Brody! Uh, I already got it all out before. <laughs> I, I tried. I tried. But you uh, don't. But you don't have. To, you're not uh, diarrheal. Diarrheal? <laughs> no. 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 I have full control over my butt. <laughs> full control of that butt. I. I've never had a fart that I knew I couldn't handle. <laughs> I'm a fart master. I'm trying yeah, to pump out as many quotes as possible. Yeah, right? I'm kind of wondering, like, what happened for him to, ha like, obviously he's diarrheal. <laughs> But for him to have tweeted that, like it is true bravery. Have you, so like I feel like something something. You happened. you brought this up, so I'm like, have I you like been in a situation happened. where uh, you've had that close call? Like, listen, I just like don't lie. Just don't lie. Like we've all been in that scenario where like maybe we've eaten some things that we shouldn't have eaten, and maybe we should just think at ease if we feel like we need to release something that maybe shouldn't be released unless you're near a toilet. All right. That's all. I'm gonna have to teach everyone out there how to control their butts, but for now, we gotta move on. It's time for Crowd Control. We got all the goodies from around the web. Now, I wanna start things off light with a fun post from Flick1533 on Reddit. He's been converting people's gamer takes to logos just for fun. Mm. Let me take a look at these. I wanna point out my favorites, of course. Yeah. This chatter tie. It's like a tie chatter fighter tie. that's talking a lot. That's brilliant. And triangle. Even triangle got a badass logo. Okay, can we submit can we possibly so submit our game his, Well, he, this post blew up, so his, his inbox is definitely oh, a little overrun right now. Oh. Um, I was actually thinking about 
messaging him, but I'm like, nah, he won't get back to see if he can get one done up for us. But yeah. what would M Rob be like? I'm tr yeah. I've been trying to think. Like, what? I don't know. You always make fun of me from a gamer tag anyway, because you don't like that it's just my name. And then and there's a also, number in it. No, you also shamed me with the number two. Like, yeah, it's just M Rob, but it's really like M Rob 29, because I love the number 29. But like, you think that numbers and gamer tags are dumb, and you shamed me, and so yeah. I like deleted it from my Twitter because of that, just so you're aware. She actually does care about my opinion. Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> there, there, people have numbers in their gamer tags all the time, Brody. You don't need to make them feel that way. Maybe I do. I'm on a crusade. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shut up. Let's, let's move on now. We all know that in competitive games, there's always a meta game that lets you win, or there's always a game that nets you win. Mm -hmm. Nets you wins, baby. It comes to business, but uh, what do you think this meta is to them? Zudi's Cafe has the answer. Oh, yeah, of course. So you could either add more game-based content, you could fix your bugs and have server updates, maybe listen to the community, oh. but everybody's opting for that last option. Add Battle Royale, baby! Oh That's, that is solving the gaming industry right now. I know you're, just, I know you're being facetious. Like, I know you're just <laughs> There's a lot of sarcasm yeah. in my voice Sarcasm. Right sarcasm. Sarcastic yeah, I love how we emphasis on the ass in sarcasm. I don't know. Do you, do you th I mean, it's, we talked about it bringing in a lot of people yeah. into the gaming world. Do you think maybe the Battle Royales are saving or making video games better? I mean, there is an argument for it. A lot of people say no and get the hay out of here. Get the hay out of here. I haven't heard that one. Uh, yeah, I feel like Battle Royale modes are bringing in eyeballs from the outside looking in. That's all. And, and they've done that. Like, Ninja's done that. I know you don't really like to talk, to about, talk about him that much, but he's done that. My, my nieces and nephews, like, they play Battle Royales. This is the first time they've gotten into video games, and that's their first experience with mm -hmm. them. So this is going to be a whole generation of kids out there that only have ever really experienced this type of gameplay, which is why I need to emphasize now more than ever that I really think we need this Animal Crossing mixed with GTA um, Chinatown <laughs> Wars and in a Battle Royale tower defense type scenario for our next amazing eSport. I'm telling you, I will crush you all. Most ambitious crossover of all time. Thank you. We'll see it happen, hopefully. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, it's time for our last post. We kind of chatted about this in our green room play before, but I'm bringing it old school with this oh. monstrosity. Jesus. What? That, what's the battery life? We talked about the Game Gear having bad battery life. Oh my gosh, so bad. What is this thing gonna do? What, the, what, are, those? So, so, what are those? They got sticks, you got the magnifying glass with the light under it, you got the speakers at the bottom, the handles. Like, what is the and point? Those run, Honestly, those run. You guys, what is the point of these? I don't get it. You have a Switch, don't you? You, you have a Switch. No, like, but that's what we had to anymore. deal we with back in the day. No, no, that's why I had a Game Gear. Yeah, but did Game Gear have those kind of accessories? That is why the Game Boy no. Color was the best no. handheld of all time. I know, but see, I had this fight going on with my brother because my brother had the Game Boy, and then he got a Game Boy Color, and I was always like, no, Game Gear is better. Like, I always made and it seem like... she swaps out batteries. No, seriously. <laughs> like, I would just lie the whole time because I wanted him to be jealous. And, like, the fact that it lit up and I could, like, play in the dark, that was my only selling point for the Game Gear. So don't hate on Game Gear, okay? It had its time. That's true. That That is kind of OP back in those days. I remember trying to, like, sneak in playing my Game Boy yeah. at night when I was supposed to be sleeping, and I'd have to find yeah. that one crack of light of coming from the hallway light into my bedroom to see. <laughs> I'm like, there was one time we had extra mattresses at the end of my bed, like up against the wall, okay. and I climbed We're on top building. of those to try, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'm trying <laughs> to like see what cards I have, like I, I'm literally at the top of the door frame with this light crack. Oh, it was brilliant. I was, and, and I'm assuming you had a good time. Oh, it was, it was it a was, struggle. I could never do that again. No, of course not. That's just what we had at the time. Agile. But now that we have these other things like Switch, etc., and even the Vita, like we don't need these types of contraptions. We don't need to mod anymore, people. Mm -hmm. We all right. Listen, uh, let us know today who you think won the battle. Press what? Four, what did you say, Brody? 480? 480 for her and five for me. No, 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 uh-uh. Press one for me. We'll see you next time. It is up on our socials at Squad State. We'll see you one day.